Namaste to everybody from the page. Welcome to Power Advice, a weekly podcast about Dynamics 365 Power Platform, real world experiences in our implementations. What are the best practices to use the tools in the ever so growing Microsoft Cloud offerings and DevOps, and of course, some things to do with life. Welcome to Power Advice, episode four, titled Power Consulting. This is a guest podcast, and we have one of the greats on Power Platform with us today, our MVP from Australia, Prashant Shukla. You will better know him for the work he has been doing in creating videos and in doing blogs around Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, very recently Canva apps, of course, and Power Platform overall. He. might be the person you might be able to find as soon as you search for any expression or formula for canva apps that is the blog that i also use a lot welcome to the show prashant thank you dipesh uh, that was that was a really good introduction um calling me great although i do not um expect to be great but it's okay okay so would you would you like to share with us how how are things in australia at the moment Things are getting better, except for one state here, uh, which is Victoria. Um, in the last week or so, the cases have gone. Uh, COVID nineteen cases have gone up much more than expected. Um, so yeah, so borders are closed for people from Victoria uh, in any other state. So other than that, it's uh, the recovery has been really good. Um, yeah, but except for Victoria, and we're really worried about that. Okay, I I understand. Thanks for letting me and us be aware about the situation in Australia. That's how it has been throughout. You you might be reading about everywhere, including India, right? Coming back to trying to motivate people, right? So I know the core topic is talking about functional part and how to do the consulting, and you are really good at that. We are all aware, right? So, <laughs> however, however, I would just want to get some quick things about. How's your journey been? There's one one question in generic that I just wanted to have an answer about from you. How's the journey been from being a starter to Dynamics to where you are today? Like, how has that journey been? If you want to summarize your journey and you want to recommend three tips to anybody, what will those tips be? Um, uh, my journey has been good. Like, I never actually expected to be a part of IT industry, but as and when I got into it, I somehow managed to do good. um which i'm not boasting about myself but yeah but like if you understand the product and you you can just make yourself somebody um who is aware of most part of the product or application we use so maybe that was the thing that that i was trying to know as much as possible and that was possible probably a few years ago uh knowing dynamics 365 now the platform has changed so much that you cannot know everything uh, but otherwise it's quite it was quite simple and to understand i think so uh, three tips i don't know just <laughs> just be somebody who is aware of most things at least at a high level so you can say yes or no to your customers that's okay so you you i think you have summarized more than three things there so thanks prashant for doing that and uh, I think if you want to be aware you can go to DIY D365 of course right so that is one <laughs> place to be aware this guy knows everything you know how to contact Prashant I'll be keeping uh, tags of his different social media channels as well and you can one from wherever you are hitting my podcast you can look at him I'll also be trying to invite him more and more on my podcast actually I wanted to invite you monthly you know that so uh, however <laughs> However, you know bandwidth constraints, and we are living in different time zones, and we are all all working remotely. So, yeah, how many times I can, I will. And one of the ways, one of the tip I will add is you need to follow him, right? And that's a good way to learn as well. He has done a lot of good content around uh, Canva apps, uh, Power Virtual Agents recently, and of course Power Automate, right? There are different series that he has done. He has blogged also on them. So you can go and refer to that. So here is my tip from your end, Prashant. I have added to the list of tips that you gave. Thank you. That was a. I know. I know that question was not pre- prepared one. So I just sometimes tend to surprise with those kind of questions, right? I'm not going to add any more new questions. Don't worry about that. And all the things that 
all the things that he said in modesty about being not being great and this and that well you can talk to him about power platform and i think you can talk to him about that for months weeks half a year like i have been talking to him uh, as much as half a year about everything power platform community and other things right so now coming back to the core topic which is where uh, the podcast is supposed to focus on power consulting do you want to talk about that now prashant sure um so i'll start from the beginning and this is my way of telling people that consulting especially in it industry is really important so the origin so it came from a latin word called consulier which means um take counsel and it's really important for us to understand what what it means to be a technical or a functional consultant and and that uh, original word it changed in 16th century to consult from consulier um expert advice is what people expect expect from you uh being a tech or a functional consultant uh it doesn't necessarily mean um that you will only do coding and similar things or just configuration um so i wanted to emphasize on this word which is consultant because there are different roles but the the current issues if i talk about functional consultants are uh based on some clients or few clients they just assume that functional consultants are dynamics 365 configurators and they can be replaced by technical consultants uh because for them technical consultants are developers so so we we really need to educate our clients as well that what's the difference so there is a difference and consulting is really important you just don't want to hire somebody for a project who can just code whatever you tell them so that's basically mm. you're just building a mammoth without knowing it's right or wrong so that's where we or people uh like us who are functional or technical consultants they come in picture because they can talk to the clients right these the the issues are that the clients completely ignore the word consultant and they hire developers who are obviously great at what they do in terms of coding but mm. the but the client would advertise jobs with title technical consultant but the description would only talk about what prog- programming languages you must know instead of instead of having a consultant mindset on board mm. so those are some of the issues um which i have faced and i think it's really important to address them and educate your clients mm-hmm. so so you can perform better in a project mm-hmm. now narrowing it down to one part of it because i'm not a technical consultant so i cannot talk on behalf of them um but in terms of being a functional consultant who can be a functional it's ba- for me it's basically there's no degree requirements here it's it's a personality you have and it's it's the skill sets which you can actually acquire um how you think and how you connect with your audience is really important you must know your product inside out um you you must think like a user you have to be a people person um and also have the ability to speak the language of your customer and if you can do all that or at least learn to do that you can be a good functional do you have any questions yet or i can just keep no talking? no you you will not continue on definitely you raise uh, fair points i have been seeing this uh, debate especially in our part of the industry which is now increasingly moving to the no code low code movement right it is increasingly important for people to realize it with power platform and dynamics 365 what point you raise about developer versus consultant i just want to add uh, my bits to what you said right my two cents to that uh, the thing is uh, there's always not only from the client side i feel you, even the partner network uh, has to be evolving a bit especially with power platform traditionally we could have lived with the notion of let's say this is a crm developer ax developer so forth right yeah. now even being that much technical will not help you in different roles you never know what hat you have to take the product range and services are so many that nobody can be expert as you already mentioned during the start of our conversation so nobody can be just expert at even just technical skill set or functional the way i devise it and all the practices i have tried to work out in the last few years is whenever somebody comes when an engineer comes typically they come with a developer mindset only right any engineer and whenever a 
business administration graduate will come to you they will come with a different uh, kind of uh, mindset right they will be talking more about the people things and all a good way to implement not at, not only as a customer uh, but also as a partner your uh, uh, consultants and yourself is for technical people to know a bit about functional for a functional people to know a bit about technical right we have had those conversations where you have told me uh, sometimes you have taken this random script and you are able to do a small <laughs> thing right and yeah. it is important right like in there is no layering in this product range uh, the reason i chose dynamics was uh, when uh, this is way back this is when i started with microsoft i wanted uh, when they asked me what kind of product range you want to work with and i was part of microsoft at one point right so i just said i want something which is technical and functional as well right i am just not interested to just build technical stuff i need to be able to you know do the other th- uh, other sides of the house as well similar way uh, in th- in the current world this product range is uh, just uh, what do you say you need both skills a bit right you cannot yeah. just say that i am fully technical i am fully functional you really don't know is customization technical or functional for instance right so <laughs> <laughs> so that's where Yes I I agree to all the points you said and it's a very important term developer versus consultant you should understand that what a consultant is definitely consultant adds lot more value there is, there are places though where developer will add value let's say i am talking about data migration a huge chunk of data integration of mm. course the there we need developers consulting will be required uh, by, uh, on top of that uh, developer then right like that, yeah. those are the people who are trying to get things right so i hope i added points to what you just said yeah, yeah you can of course continue on we are going to continue on power consulting tip and i think that's a very fair tip you started with yeah and i completely agree what you're saying and i'm saying that developer definitely they have got a different zone altogether and they are obviously good at what they do but it's just the role difference which we need in every project so that that's what i meant uh let's talk about uh, what other things you got to uh, suggest to all the people who are listening to our podcast today sure so um the next part i want to talk about is expectations um you get from your clients and you should have these expectations from yourself as well as a consultant be it a functional or a technical consultant right so, so the first one is knowledge it is really important at all times that you're aware of the functionalities which are available uh, out of the box or configurable functionalities and features and their limitations and trust me it's not hard to be aware of this or functionalities uh, in this era of web where we can actually go to different communities or join communities there's so many um, and when you look at certain questions that actually let your brain work and function in a way that you get more aware of what's available in the system um and as a functional you are supposed to know almost everything and the reason is because people look at you and ask you and if you go during a workshop i don't know that whole day is delayed right so you at least have to have a high level information whether th- this would be possible or not so understanding the art of the possible is really important because that's how you can let your client or customer imagine things so the art of the possible here is really important and that can only come to you uh with the right knowledge um number 2 here is challenge the business this is expected and these days your customers want this because otherwise they're paying you money for nothing because they will say i need this process mapped and you say i can map it with a business process flow let's say right but you need to challenge them saying how is it aligned to their business or how is it aligned to their let's say sales process things like that you'll have to ask question why do they want to do it so and that can come to you when you're informed or well informed right so you must be well informed about your audience it is important that before starting a discussion with your client um as functionals or technicals we must read research and try to understand their industry the processes and i have done this myself a lot many times so i go to their website i even call their customer care just to understand and these are obviously fake calls but that gives me some hint that how are the processes working which gives me a very high like a helicopter level view into their business process without even getting involved in a workshop right 
but that makes me informed about something and I'll be able to challenge the business with a few things. So make sure that we have spoken to the client about their vis vision, uh, what's the vision for the organization, what's the objective of the project, uh, and if it's not aligned, we must change it. We must change it or challenge it so that the product owner or the program manager or the project manager can do something about it. And I have seen instances where a consultant business analyst while talking to business just says yes to everything. And this yes to all, not just bites you back, but your team members as well, along with the whole organization when you're doing a enterprise level project, right? So your client certainly does not deserve it as they hire you for your expertise. And that's what I was talking about, the origin of the word consult, right? And that's why they hire you because they need expert advice. And all you do is create a document, what they said, and divide it into customization and configuration. And I say no to that. You need to ask your client about the value of a requirement, what value that requirement would add to their process, if it should be done or it should be made redundant, can we achieve it via some other way? So you need to ask them all these things. You need to ask them about how the end result will help them achieving their objectives, right? You need to tell your client about alternatives available. You need to challenge them to simplify their complex business processes because at the end, the system is used by end users. And if they don't like it, your project would not survive or your product wouldn't survive there and everybody will complain about it. So it's all the groundwork you do as functionals because once you have actually got the requirements and these days everything is agile and scrum so you do showcases every week it's a bit different but still you need to get your ground um, groundwork done so that was number two that you have to be well informed and you should be ready to challenge a business and i'm sure they will appreciate it number Fair enough. yeah Yep, go ahead if you want to say something. Yeah, I just want to summarize whatever you were saying, right? So we started with uh, point number one is uh, the origins of word consult. Know what is consultant, what is developer. Then uh, there are a lot of terms that you use. So I just want to call them Prashant origin terms from here, right? So <laughs> they, should, they should be known as Prashant origin terms from here. Education, pretty important, knowing your product, what you're dealing with challenge with different kinds of options to your client just don't become an order right that is pretty yeah. important ability to ask questions adds value there understanding your client and audience research your client industry and their processes a great example which we will now term in the case of community is helicopter level view from prashant is going to their customer care team for instance and then getting a understanding about their processes of course to get an understanding by that phone call you need an experience right and it will not come the moment first time i'm going to a let's say a telecom giant and i'm calling them up i might not understand what is going on behind the scenes right but yeah. you keep doing that and you learn so that is the helicopter level view which uh, that's the term invented by prashant here and then then you don't say yes to everything very very difficult we have we normally think uh, yes client is of course always right but at the same time, customer is always right. At the same time, they are hiring you, paying you premium in enterprise grade projects, not to say yes to everything. In other words, learn to say no, or if not learn to say no, at least try to give them options on the table, right? All of these points are going to add to one thing when it goes in front of the end users, user adoption. And that's where most of the enterprise or SMB or other implementation fail, right? You run a project for a year or half a year or a few years. When it comes to the end users, have you not done all that? it's going to fail, right? And that's industry statistics everybody can check. So that's what uh, Prashant told uh, in uh, point number two and one so forth. And yeah, we can continue Prashant. I was, was just trying to... <laughs> Thank you for that. There was just one more thing. Uh, having the ability to know and show the art of possible to the client, th that's also really important. Yeah, yeah, of course, I forgot one more very, very important term that is going to be called Prashant's term <laughs> to the community from here, the art of possible. Yes, you need to have the art of possible and that's going to add power to your consulting, your implementation. We go forward to the next tip, Prashant, for consulting. 
Yep. So the next one is believe. So believe in yourself, believe in your skills as a team member, because a lot of the time it would happen that people in your team would just think that you're just a functional. And, and I'm specifying and emphasizing just because that happens a lot, because what you do doesn't matter because all the work is actually done by technical consultants or developers. So you're just a functional consultant. You shouldn't ever take it to your heart. Just believe in yourself and think that that role exists for a reason. There must be something really important that this role um, was created. So believe and trust me that D365 role exists. Uh, for a reason and you must believe in your role your importance as a team member uh, It will keep you going don't push the other thing is uh, as functionals don't push everything to the developers think of the ways you can achieve requirements um, By using out-of-the-box functionalities or just doing configuration as well so that's where your belief come in picture when uh, because there is a habit and I think this is a human tend tendency or human nature where as a technical person because I know programming I try to solve problems by coding things and not thinking of what's available and reduce efforts that's a natural which comes so if it, it just have an analogy yeah. that if somebody plays cricket they will think about the cricket field first and not the soccer field so that will happen by default and that's where as a functional you're the neutral person who actually bridges the gap between the business and the technical team right so you can speak business so which is a very good segue to take me to my next point uh, which is speak business. So as a functional consultant, you're supposed to speak the business language or use layman terms. Yeah, it's you who is an expert of D365 or Dynamics 365 or Power Platform, whatever application you your background is in, but not your client. They understand only their business and the terms they use in their daily lives or work lives, right? So when holding conversations with the business, make sure you don't use technical terms. Otherwise, your audience will not be able to understand, resulting in communication gaps. So that will happen for sure. So make sure you communicate in a way which is understood by your audience. And your audience, when I say, is your customer. Um, and that's where when I was talking about the first part and challenging the business and knowing, knowing what their processes are by reading their website or just filling a form or just calling customer care that will give you some hint that what their daily terms are so you need to go prepare and this will simplify things for your customer use the whiteboard right if you think that there are some things which you cannot convert to a business language use the whiteboard draw it so that your customer can understand it because until they understand they will not be able to tell you their requirements properly. So it is really important for you to speak business. I will totally agree to that, Prashant. So just to summarize the last two points again, believing in self, no matter you come from functional, we are talking about consulting world. So functional do play a uh, major role in that. That's why it is important. Uh, the ability to speak business is pretty important, adding to the last few points also, the point number one and two that Prashant mentioned. Uh, and void boarding, pretty important. And to the to a degree, even if uh, they can see it visually, right? What if we, they can just quickly see something which is near about to theirs? It can be a mock-up, it can be just one form and one process, something like that on a, a Dynamics 365 or a model-driven app screen, maybe a small Canvas screen that gives them that um, clear understanding, right? That's what uh, it was about whiteboarding or having a visual uh, clue for them to be able to understand what you're saying. Just one point I want to add for the technical consultant because consulting for me is important even on the technical side. If there are technical professionals thinking coding first or uh, creating custom things first in your uh, uh, organization or as a client, you have those kinds of contractors or professionals. I think that is to do with uh, their training issue or learning issue, right? I I will always go back and uh, question the trainings that they have done, the certifications when they were conducting it, because throughout Microsoft maintains one thing, right? Like if you if you even go for a certification or a learning, how we how we learn a new technology, we learn it with doing newer certification or courses specifically coming from Microsoft, or there are other uh, community folks or MCTs, MVPs making their courses. 
now it is a big training issue if somebody who is technical is first going and starting to write a plugin or write a custom connector before thinking of thinking out of box functionality i have recently you know the mammoth uh, training i'm going through i'm not going to name the client however for the last uh, four to five weeks i've been going through that if i'm explaining sales process and somebody goes and tells me that oh we should write a uh, we should write a plugin or a client side script for that what that that's totally a wrong training that has been given and the person has learned in a wrong way according to me i'm i'm crystal clear this is no right and wrong debate in my head uh, you should think out of box first you, and that's where you should take assistance from your functional folks so my recommendation is like okay you cannot know everything at least try to find out of box ones and then otherwise take assistance from your functional folks right so it is very very important that point for me and that's where many many implementations go into this big uh, i will not even call it a mammoth i can call it as big as a dinosaur or t uh, dinosaurus rex right and uh, <laughs> that that's what it becomes right like you are yeah. building such a custom set of code and which which is going to be the same kind of issues that the client has seen they are moving towards a no code low code cloud based ecosystem so that they can quickly change the things right we all know you also know prashant why people are moving to power platform right these are industry yeah. statistic you start with a you start with a 50k project let's say 50k is a very small number compared to what it can be actually and very quickly in 6 months to a year we are talking about investing 100k and then we are going 150k right and we don't know the end to that technical dependency so that's where also functional consulting is really really important i i hope i added uh, uh, my side from the technical bit right because it is important yeah. for technical yeah. folks also to understand this yeah yeah now when i when i say consultant i mean both uh, but i just I, i can only share expertise of the functional area because i have not worked as a technical one so that's why i limit myself um but in saying that um if somebody or if one of my team member tells me that this is what i need to do i always think of out of the box things if not i think of configurations or using the tools which are available um once what happened was uh it was related to auto numbering okay and we were to somebody was to write a plugin now i didn't have resources available and the client wanted it pretty quick like within 24 hours and the client was australia based what i did instead is i used a real time workflow to generate order numbers with different prefixes and what not so that's available on my blog um and at some point it time it was like one of the most hit like probably 4 years ago it was one of the most hit blog mm-hmm. on my website but mm-hmm. but it's things like that this that once when somebody is not available how would you mm-hmm. do it functionally or as a mm-hmm. functional mm-hmm. consultant so mm-hmm. that's important and there's so many other such things which you could do uh, without writing a single line of code you you had a very fair point i i review implementations for a living as well sometimes right and mm-hmm. to this point i see people writing plugins for uh, auto numbering now do you think that is fair with, to do with power platform at this stage i don't even think it is fair anymore right no. why the client should invest in a technical dependency for thing that is available as a out of box feature right so yeah. if a, if my technical consultant has not been upgraded in the last 5 uh, years 10 years and that can happen some people go into either comfort zones or are not upgrading themselves in the skill set are not even yet aware about the auto number field right and that yeah. exists i have yeah. i've seen those reviews like okay you're upgrading to dynamics 365 my last uh, podcast was about upgrades right it mm. was called uh, power upgrade and, yeah. and the something to take you from there only i will add uh, one example that i saw you're upgrading code means you're upgrading that auto number code and plugin that was there and you will not convert it into a auto number i mean that is the thing that is what functional consultant will come in and tell the team guys the uh, client is paying for a new platform and it will add value to them right so that is the kind of real world example i can relate to of yeah. course is that that real time workflow is a is a great example at this stage i know you will recommend auto number fields i i yeah, because now it's available out of the box so now you 
<laughs> you don't have the, to worry. And and the only time a functional consultant has to really go back into a technical consultant or the architect's layer, right? Is okay if something is adding the performance value and the performance value is also value to my client, right? At the end of the day, what we all are trying to do is add value. Mm-hmm. So if if somebody comes back to me and says, as a technical architect or a reviewer from Microsoft comes in and says, oh. you're doing in this way it is going into out of box however you can have a better performance with this and if i if my time permits and client agrees i will go for that right so yeah. that's kind of the ecosystem you were trying to tell and i added my recent example because it was more it was very relevant to what you talked about your blog of course uh, you've been blogging for x number of years there are tons of blogs that people can refer the low code no code movement you are one key crusader for that in power platform mm-hmm. so we 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 all understand that so however you wrote workflow at that time i know how you have evolved and same is with the same is to do with my blog to a degree as well right i do yeah. write uh, coding tips from time to time however if nothing exists then i will go and write that my first preference is to support the low code no code movement as well yeah going back to you prashant now all right so this is my last point and it's the boring one so most people don't want to do this and this is something called documentation <laughs> so um it is very well, really important be, be well, well yeah well like most people don't want to do it and you should add one more thing most people don't want to pay for it <laughs> yeah 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 most yeah some clients are like that but it's really important it's it's really important for for a client to refer back once they change the team once you leave and go to another project so documentation does help you can do it digitally now on on confluence or other such tools like azure devops um but you can do it in one way or the other but yeah most of like i feel it is boring always but you must know you be prepared mm-hmm. for documents mm-hmm. and must know how to prepare documents be your mm-hmm. technical or a functional consultant it would come to you uh, as as making you the owner of these things and mm-hmm. you'll be asked to do it so know the structures of a brd like a business requirement document functional requirement document technical design document solution design document all such things you must be aware of their structures and how to work on them and what should be included in those documents and sometimes you will also have to create user guides or user manuals um so that's also important the other thing which is very important in terms of documentation is just be an expert of drawing process flows so know how to use visuals if you don't have uh the license for that know how you can create it in powerpoint using shapes and there are other websites as well you can uh, do it on um mm-hmm. and the last one in documentation is knowing how to create wireframes and it's not that you need to buy a tool or go to an external website the best way is your powerpoint or excel itself mm-hmm. you can always have screenshots and edit mm-hmm. them in paint or snag it Uh, what there are certain tools available and create wireframes because uh at some point in time your client will ask that how how would that product look and mm-hmm. obviously if you start building it as poc and you're not paid for your proof of concept it's better mm-hmm. to have a wireframe instead mm-hmm. of uh investing your time without getting paid into something else so documentation is really really important whether you like it or not you must learn how to do that well one way of enjoying our work is liking what we, uh, everything that we do around it right and making it look like a game so i think documentation is pretty important always been important uh, whatever points you said totally makes sense i have nothing to add except i have seen a tendency with people especially like let's say there are tight constraints which are which is typical to the dynamics uh, 365 traditionally we used to have dynamics crm we belong yeah. to that side of the house and now we are into power platform and integrated suit like uh, if you take examples such as project operations we have to know both now right as a dynamics 365 functional or technical and that things are going to evolve i i, I think that is the that is the way i see it that doesn't mean that uh, i have certain processes i have constraints i have the ever evolving technology or uh, cloud uh, that microsoft is providing to us uh that is the kind of reasoning peop- uh, many professionals give including many expert professionals or contractors that i don't have time to document this i think that tendency is to do more with that if i keep this processes in my head or if i keep it to myself that is going to be kind of uh, better for me in my role i don't see that happening right like the amount of technology that is coming your way everybody 
you will have to start documenting the least documentation you should do even if you think uh, in that direction inside you is uh, for yourself right and uh, that's where i started my blog seven and a half or eight whatever years back that was my documentation or my kb article to self i didn't know whether people will read it or not and you know prashant at that time there were x number of blogs right like yeah. uh, t- today today we have a plethora of blogs just in champs community i think we have 20 to 25 bloggers right evolved yeah. over the last year and yeah. year and a half so that's kind of that kinds of feels great and kind of a give back and you have been motivating lot of people as well to do that but you remember when eight or nine years back or a decade back if somebody will search for something on dynamics do, did we used to even get something and what is that at the end of the day that is also documentation so you need to be able right. to enjoy it i was initially a technical guy i didn't used to enjoy it right many times mm-hmm. i will be very honest and then you evolve and you start learning of course it has helped me and sometimes uh, uh, people will come to me and tell okay this was the thing we did from 2013 your blog article and i will still again do a read through nobody mm-hmm. has that kind of memory right we are all yeah. learners we are all <laughs> evolving so yeah. i will that i will use it as me. <laughs> I will use it as a KB article and uh, I will not keep it to myself that is the main point so document it for your team yeah. for your client for your partner to improve yourself and that gives you growth it is not like it is not going to give you growth so I will I will just summarize by saying that because we wa- we, we have one more se- section to go Prashant so I that is from my end you know I can uh, and you can we can make it a 2 hour podcast but then <laughs> let's not make it a 2 hour yeah. podcast yeah, I just to... wanted to give an example here with the documentation thing and okay. uh, that might prove uh, how important it is so uh, we got a project for one department of a huge hotel chain like they're a multi country hotel and they didn't want to pay as a department they didn't want to pay for documentation right so what i did i did the project and what not but i still created the document just in case right now what happened four months later they reported that they did not get what they asked for and there was a field, field or two missing on one form right and i'm like it's not possible so i had a call with them <laughs> and i showed my document which i created and i had screenshots in that so that was basically the design document i had screenshots i said this field was right here who has got mm-hmm. system admin access in your team and they right. told me and that person then said oh i actually thought this this is not necessary so i removed it so that's how it helped me and it tells you the importance of documentation um so um, mm. although i wasn't paid for it but obviously instead of sitting uh, non billable you can do something productive mm. right so yeah i'll totally i'll totally agree uh, so you need to have passion and a lot of uh, motivation to do the best of what time what situation you are in definitely agree to prashant's point there thanks for giving that example prashant and thanks for taking the time to talk so much about the consulting side of the house i think uh, definitely this should add value to whoever is listening to all this there are a lot of relevant real world examples that should be the case i hope it is a good advice the name of this cv uh, this podcast is power advice and again we are trying to advise with the learnings and experiences that we go through every day every year i hope that has added value to your uh, consulting skills and you will start to work and uh, utilize that in your role in for your customers for your partner for your company and even microsoft thank you prashant the different thing about this podcast is you know there's a live segment to it and we are going to move to the live segment after this so what do what would we talk about in live segment i think it's a very fair point and again uh, there is nothing like uh, whatever comes to our head right live segment is really talking about life and and the current times i feel it is very very important to talk about life prashant isn't it we are all living through some times which nobody the human race has not seen in the last century at least so it's important to add some life to this podcast as well and that's where i thought it's imp- it's okay to maybe add last 5 minutes or 4 minutes sometimes uh, to talk about live segment so the live segment that i am going to raise is very very relevant to you and me as well to a degree i'm going to talk about the effort and the determination it takes to just build the community content and and that's going to give some kind of light on the life and how in in terms of life why how much effort and determined you need to be in your life right so let's talk about community courses as an example 
so many people come to us and just uh, tell like uh, can this community course be built can this community course be built right and we will talk about from the effort determination and passion perspective that is the ideology not the technical side of our how long does it typically take to build one course let's say you have built so many i have built one there are more on the way how long does it take and what are the motivations etc yeah so i built uh, till date i've completed three courses and they are live um yeah. the most time i took was for the first one because i'm not a professional trainer um and like i have done it at work but like not the course content thing right so it took me a lot of time so if i'll tell you the real time that i i wasted at least six weekends not wasted i should say invested six invested weekends. invested yeah invested yeah. is the right word invested six weekends um to get that uh, canvas app in an hour running because i was thinking from the point of view of a 15 year old or a 70 year old who can still um enroll themselves in this course and still have the repository like the documentation that excel i provided and things like that making it easier how to create the trial so it, it's explained in detail but i was just thinking what if i don't know power platform so that one took a lot of time and then the next one because it was part of power platform itself like cds in an hour and model driven app in an hour i i my three segments or three chapters of those courses were already created so that took less of time but still it takes a lot of time so it's not that if somebody requests me today that oh can you create a course on this i sure can but let's see if it, if it would be in next 6 months four months or mm-hmm. whenever because we we have also got day jobs and what we do is voluntarily and we are passionate mm-hmm. about giving back mm-hmm. to the community so we do that but still mm-hmm. we we also need to take out time so a lot of times for a month uh during the weekends i'll not go out like nowhere mm-hmm. and, and during mm-hmm. the week you obviously have to work so mm-hmm. it takes a lot of time right finding that effort and determination and passion how it is important for life we just understood right so prashant has just told you six weekends means if i take a 8 hour weekend that is 48 hours of personal time gone if i am uh, if i am prashant right i will talk about my example after this however uh, that's a lot of time right and then of course uh, Uh, there are so uh, you are just talking about the recording time after that you have the edits to be done you have to build it and put it on the tool there is no money into it first of all we are not doing it for money right so yeah. that that's that's the first point so how how to be determined have uh, motivation passion for something that doesn't give us anything monetary or anything materialistic in return that's what the live segment i wanted to talk about are you asking me me that question or you're going to answer it <laughs> oh i'm asking the question so i'm going to add to this uh, of course afterwards but how do you find that uh, passion motivation determination i, so I most- don't a, a lot of people you know what they tell me i don't have a life and uh, i don't know i think this is my life i i like recording videos um earlier i was like i i'm a very camera shy person right but earlier what i used to do is uh, i'll write a blog right and that changed because i started my youtube channel and i realized a lot of people including all these young people i'm not young uh, i am young i don't know like people who are still in school and you are um, very very you are let's let's come to that also live segment should have like he's a very yeah. old guy you can hear him he's <laughs> almost a 60 year old uh, guy we are talking to but you sound very young prashan No. let's <laughs> no I, i i just mean that like kids they go to youtube a lot to search for something everybody including us we try to find we when we see something visually we tend to understand it better so that's why i changed my whole thing to video recordings and i was a very camera shy person and i'm till date i am like that and you'll realize that if you watch my videos um but i felt that people should know who i am because my channel name right. or blog name is not me at all so at least right. they should see my right. face in the small corner but how that passion comes i think it's, it just comes because you want to 
share things and not just keep it to yourself and you'll see a lot of time my my blogs or videos will cover uh, things like with that red mark because i want to hide that that this is the work i was doing for a client and i found this solution this is pretty cool so i'll share it to you so you don't have to waste four hours or eight hours or two hours mm -hmm. of your time instead you can mm -hmm. just pick the solution so it's basically helping out each other if you mm -hmm. think like that you will be determined to share uh, mm -hmm. your solutions to others and that's what mm -hmm. i do and all my video series as well um, they are also about learning together. So Power Virtual Agent, obviously I didn't know about it. I started off, um, I obviously, no, I, I shouldn't say obviously, I learned the concept pretty quickly, but then I made it in a way that people can watch a 20 minute video every time and learn each aspect or component of this chatbot uh, or the new product Power Virtual Agent. So yeah, it's like that. Yeah, I totally agree to uh, whatever you said. You you raised a very fair point. The technology has evolved, the networks have evolved, and we all now can depend on video-based tutorials. If you were given a video-based tutorial on YouTube in 2012, well, 2013, well, we'll, I'll not be able to play it properly, right? And that's why I think the written documentation used to take a lot more cue. And you have to evolve. I also introduced my channel, you know, as in, and, yeah. and that I can say it is inspirational, like everybody inspires everybody else. I, I did see a lot of channels, including yours, and I said it is time. I did a channel back in 2013 to 15 as well, right? Nobody needed, nobody used to watch it at that time because mm -hmm. the bandwidth, the network, and the way we could device and use technology now, uh, that was not possible, right? It was not so evolved yet. And now there is just a plethora and our channels are doing fairly well considering the ecosystem. So I will, I, I completely agree to what you said and why determination and why this motivation is there because passion, passion is pretty important. We enjoy what we do and it's a way to improve your own self. So there's no day when I don't want to learn along with anybody. I'm, I'm right now training really young minds again, as you know, since last month or so. And the kind of queries and curiosities they come with uh, that segment of uh, crowd. I'm not saying I'm very, very old. We, you and me are both young guys and we are very, we are pretty young. We started our IT career pretty early. We all, uh, we both know that very well. So oh, enough for the joke part, but the young minds are of course uh, giving me a lot of new ideas. Uh, recently I was part of a program from Canada and I, I do take them remotely. You know that Prashant as well, right? So yeah. in that program, there were mostly directors and uh, CIOs and CEOs of various partners and you know the age, group, age segment there, right? So it gives different kinds of perspectives and I do it for that passion. And uh, my my the current one that I completed, I could have done it very, very much alone. There was a there was a gap. Everybody's talking about no code, low code in Power Platform, but nobody was talking about automating uh, ALM and there was not enough documentation out there till that point. So Dharani Dharan and I got together and I wanted to, uh, Dharani Dharan has been working with me for some time, right? You know, so in communities and we work, all, we all work together in chance. So we got together and we said like, yeah, let's build something. For at least us, it took uh, not, uh, we are not as pro as you. It took us like good four and a half weeks of our life. I don't know what times we were sleeping, sometimes 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So yes, it, it motivates us if somebody, if it, it motivates us Prashant, right? If somebody comes and says, build a community course, we're not doing it for money. We are trying to give the best possible time, but that should not ruin the quality of the learning that we are trying to create. That's why we do it at a slower pace. And the next motivation was Kuldeep, right? We all know what happened as a result. And so now there are like five community courses. So there's so much uh, learning for people out there. So uh, uh, there's so much free learning for people out there, right? And that's that's going to continue. Of course, if the effort is a lot more, uh, that's where uh, sometimes I've got question, Prashant, and I'm very, very honest about it. You know how my, uh, how my different, uh, uh, interviews you might have seen earlier in the YouTube channel are very, very honest. So yeah. people come and say, why you are doing a paid course? Like, guys, we also need to do certain thing to do, uh, to do a day job, right? It's my day job to do that. So many, many times you'll see free community courses for us because we are passionate and we want to plug a gap like with Power Platform doing a ALM, right? You need to automate that because I'm doing a low code, no code thing. I don't know coding and I need to figure out a way to quickly move my solution from point A to point B. That's yeah. about it. And that's why we build that. And then 
there are some other courses that we run or might be prashant might be running other uh, there are great courses from other mcts and mvps as well yes that's their day job that's totally allowed right that's what we do another example of passion uh, determination and motivation i had been very very bad on my health especially with my knee injury personal example again prashant and many people know in the community that i had a very bad knee injury last year when I, while i was in singapore and uh, my weight was just constantly increasing because i was not able to be mobile anymore right typically i'll do lo- like lot of walk the talks kind of things as running a practice i will lot of my calls will be walking around like the campus where we are mm-hmm. but it just stopped i got to 95.6 kgs right and lockdown is demotivating to many people how i wanted to utilize this finally is time i want to i need to control my diet all the burgers pizzas and everything that i do and all the lifestyle that i've gained i am now at 81.8 in 4 months so that is an example of uh, motivation and determination yeah i have not still been able to exercise knee is not to that straight i cannot exercise as much as you would you are really young compared to me in that way however <laughs> however that's another example and i don't want to quote yours uh, the amount of dedication you i have seen with you especially when you were uh, doing those courses for like 2 to 3 months that is where the results are coming right and you are really you are one of the best out there on power platform let's say like that right so my recommendation about live segment is oh, okay we took a technology example from the guest and me but different segments you get motivated you stay determined you get your results right you want you everybody has a dream but to achieve that you need to be motivated and give the effort and there are there is not always one single reason to do things that is either like something materialistic or monetary no there are other reasons as well so go out there try to find your passion and be determined to do that that's the summarization of life segment thank you prashant if you have anything to add this is the point i hope uh, you enjoyed the conversation and everybody will be utilizing it in their careers in their life anything to add prashant No, I agree with you whatever you said in the last minute or so. Um I would just like to extend my thanks to you for having me on the show. Thank you. Thank you Prashant for coming to Power Advice Power 365 as usual to everybody. We will continue our journey. We will have we will keep having guests uh, just like we had this uh, expert from Australia, a great guy Prashant. We will try to invite him more. If you like this one, if you share feedbacks, he's definitely going to come back again with more topics. I already listed out like four topics Prashant while we were talking. Thank you for your time. Uh, this is a real big one you know the other episodes have been smaller so please do share your feedbacks and see you next time thanks for prashant to give us time on this episode of power advice